All right, so let's start with the big story that we're tracking on Vion at this hour. So it is more than a day since the United States assassinated the Iranian general Qasem Soleimani and also another important leader of the PMF. Now this, of course, was a force that was involved and instrumental in defeating the ISIS in Iraq. Now, the PMF is a group, it's a militia that is considered to be loyal to the Iranians. And Al Muhandis was one of the commanders of this militia, the Iraqi paramilitary chief. And it is his funeral that is presently underway in Baghdad. Now, these are live scenes from Baghdad where there are many people who, have, of course, gathered for the funeral. And he's also someone who was known as a very close ally of Iran. And his militia had taken part in defeating the ISIS. Remember, the United States had, if not overtly, at least covertly had, in, in some ways, had allied closely with some of these Iranian proxy operatives in Iraq in defeating the ISIS. And once the ISIS was defeated, the focus of the United States, of course, now shifted. It's not very clear as to what the United States was trying to accomplish by taking out Qasem Soleimani and also Al Muhandis, who was an important leader, commander of this particular Iraqi militia that goes by the name PMF. Now they were killed in an airstrike, and Al Muhandis is said to be a very popular figure actually in eastern Iraq, the, the area that borders Iran. And the two high functionaries who've been killed in this drone strike by the United States were Qasem Soleimani and Al Muhandis. The funeral of Qasem Soleimani will take place tomorrow, but today what we're looking at, these are live scenes from Baghdad where the funeral of Al Muhandis is presently underway. This is his funeral procession that is making its way slowly through the streets of Baghdad. All right, so this, this, of course, is the funeral procession of the PMF leader, Al Muhandis, that is presently underway in Baghdad. And this will, of course, have far-reaching consequences for the power structure dynamics within Iraq. Many of the Iraqis were extremely that Iran was able to leverage over Baghdad. There, there were protests that were being witnessed against, against uh, the government, which many people said was way too closely allied with Tehran. But now with the killing of Al Muhandis, that dynamic is now going to change. And many have of course come forward and said that by taking out Qasem Soleimani and Al Muhandis in Baghdad, what the United States has, has inadvertently ended up doing is that it has strengthened the hand of Tehran in Iraq. And, and this, of course, is a dynamic. It'll be interesting to see as to how all of this, of course, plays out. Iran has said that it has the right to retaliate against this assassination. Iran has described this as an act of international terrorism by the United States. And it'll be interesting to see as to what the Iranian reaction will be. In the past, any time that Iranian interests have been threatened, Iran has said that it will always choke up.
The important strait through which 30% of the world's oil supply passes and the immediate aftermath of the killing of Soleimani, the crude oil prices jumped up by 4%. How much higher will the crude oil prices be cranked up because of this unfolding crisis is something that, that will be witnessed over the course of the next few weeks. I also earlier spoke with Glenn Carl, who is an American author and also a former intelligence officer, and this is what he had to say on this unfolding crisis. Well, that's the uh, the, the great question. Uh, I know that uh, 13 years ago, in 2007, uh, General Stanley McChrystal, who was then commanding our Special Operations Forces, had the uh, possibility of uh, killing Soleimani and decided not to. Uh, the same occurred in 2008, I believe, and I think a number of other times. Each time the decision was that the costs of doing so uh, would outweigh the, uh, the benefits uh, because it destabilized the, uh, the international environment and it's a causes belly. It's a clear act against the senior official in, in a foreign government rather than a proxy acting on behalf, which is normally what happens. Why Trump has decided to do this now, I think uh, and the proximate explanation is because of the escalating uh, tit-for-tat exchanges between Iranian uh, proxies in Syria and uh, Iraq against Americans and vice versa. And this time, uh, Trump decided uh, enough of this. They've now stormed our embassy. We aren't going to go down that path again as we had in Tehran and Pakistan and elsewhere. And so he struck. That's the short-term answer. The long-term answer is, I suspect simply is, this is a bad actor and we will eliminate him. And it, I don't think the thinking has gone further than that. Well, uh, it's hard to read uh, a coherent policy when there, 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 one is lacking. Uh, Trump's responses have been, uh, just as you correctly describe, uh, contradictory with uh, themselves and uh, tactical and short term. Uh, it also, I just finished uh, an article for another publication on, on this exact subject, and I came to the point where I had to describe what the United States' objectives are with respect to Iran under Trump. Uh, the only word I could come up with is fuzzy. Uh, there's maximum pressure, there's hostility, they seek a regime change without going to war, uh, uh, to, and yet they demand it's not clear what from Iran other than to stop being a bad It's hard to assess really what uh, Trump is up to because the policy is in many ways incoherent. Yes, I think that's a good point. Uh, I was uh, working on terrorism issues in uh, 1998 when uh, Clinton engaged in uh, the strikes. And I actually have always felt that uh, Clinton received uh, unfair uh, criticism for playing uh, the wag the dog, as the expression was, uh, trying to divert attention. Uh, that may have been a tertiary uh, reason, but but there was um, a justifiable cause, a real issue for Clinton to address with regard to al-Qaeda. So I, I think that's unfortunate for Clinton. I, I think in this instance with Trump, that uh, point is probably more accurate. Uh, that was one of the first things that did come to my mind also. Uh, Trump, if he has any uh, abilities, he is a master at uh, creating um, attention from issues that he doesn't want uh, or cannot address. And so uh, rallying the nation around an endangered uh, uh, flag um, or finding a bogeyman uh, to rally against uh, is obviously time honored and uh, Trump is not uh, above doing that. So I think there may well be an element of that, yes.